Hello everybody, my name is Michael. I'm running the Board Games Chronicle blog. Today I would like to invite you to the Field Commander Alexander. The uh, first game in a series from DVG Games uh, regarding the Field Commanders. Uh, we have also Field Commander uh, Rommel and Field Commander Napoleon. Uh, what I will be playing today will be the first scenario in this game, Granicus. This is a solitary game. Uh, it has four scenarios from the uh, legendary Alexander the Great campaign. Granicus, Isus, Tyr, Zich and uh, Gaugamela. Uh, the game is played over a couple of turns. Depending how quickly you will end the game, you will get that many victory points. In order to uh, finish the scenario, the Alexander, starting here in Macedon, has to conquer or intimidate all the uh, strategic pivotal areas. Such areas are the areas uh, which can be only conquered in battle. Such areas, strongholds, can be conquered in battle or can be intimidated. Over the course of those four scenarios, Alexander will be gaining new treats and new characteristics uh, by fulfilling the prophecies and his uh, token will get uh, will become much more powerful at this moment in time he should be at the lowest level a0 let me just move him here yeah a a1 which is uh, level 0 and then he will be moving up through the all uh, levels of his career uh, uh, up to a8 uh, the enemy is driven by the operations and orders, so during the turn we'll be rolling a die to see what the enemy does, but it's actually up to us what, what to do. Alexander will be also uh, advised and helped, uh, assisted by his advisors. We have like five of them and we choose one at the beginning of the turn and I choose Parminion. He will be uh, decreasing the number of enemy battle plans during the battle by three. This is really very important. Uh, before each and every battle, we do not only put the units here at the battle display, but we also draw or choose the battle plans. More on this uh, later on. All in all, uh, the game can be played uh, on various difficulty levels. As you can see, we have a campaign options here. Many of those campaign options made the game more difficult, but you can get more victory points for this. One thing is getting the victory points from each and every uh, scenario, but then you can translate them to so-called immortality points. Immortality points take into account everything what you achieved during the scenario, and you can count them across all four scenarios to see where did you land in the history. Pretty cool mechanic, which I really like. I think that without further ado, I will start playing I will be, and will be also explaining some of the rules along the way. Uh, I admit that I played this game already a couple of times, both uh, uh, Granicus and Isus scenario, so I hope I will get the flow pretty nicely. Uh, fine. Sequence of play. We start from the preparation phase. Uh, we advance the turn marker to the turn one. Now, uh, what will be the next step? Uh, we can refit the units uh, whenever pos uh, needed and, 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 and possible. Uh, we will not need to do anything here because everybody's fully alive. Uh, if the unit is flipped, you can see it's in red, then we can spend two gold to actually uh, Train, train him, retrain him. We start with 10 gold. We'll be getting the gold for governing or raising the provinces and also for all destroyed forces, enemy forces. So nothing in refit. Now enemy orders. As far as enemy orders are concerned, we roll a die for each and every stronghold to see what they will do. To the roll, we add the uh, distance from the Alexander army. The closer the army is, the more severe defense measures will be taken. We start with Sardis, one, two, three, four, from Alexander, so plus four. 
5 plus 4 is 9, and 9 means 2 gold. So if we intimidate the Sardis, we'll get 2 gold more. Halicarnassus, 5, so her all plus 5, 7, 6, 7, 1, Garrison. So we draw 1 unit to add to Halicarnassus. It will be Archer. Okay, fine. And now uh, Lysia. Also five. Five. Eleven, it will be do nothing. That's all as far as the orders are concerned. Now we do the enemy operations. We draw one operation. That one is two forces. Uh, we can prevent this from happening if we pay for gold. I don't want to prevent this, so the two forces are added to the operational display. When we draw the operation GO, all those units, as per information here, will go to Halicarnassus. What I draw? I draw inf two infantry. This is not a bad draw. And that will end the preparation phase. Now the most important phase of the game, the conquest phase. Okay. So we will be doing the scout check, and uh, if we roll on a die more than the number of units, we are taking that many hits, in case of six we would have one hit, but if we roll less than the number of units, we need to have uh, some money, like in this case three, to buy the forage and the, for the supplies. It's a really nice mechanic because the larger the army is, the more you need to spend each time you move. The smaller the army is, the more likely is that it will be hit that it will face the resistance. So, uh, first thing first, before moving the, uh, against the Persian Empire, we need to make sure that the Greek part is in order. So we will be attacking Caronea. Our first move would be here with the Macedonian army. It's still the time when the Alexander the Great father, Philip, uh, was still alive. So during this battle, we will be drawing three additional battle plans than what we would get normally. So we go here, we roll a die. We rolled two, which is not very good because we lose as many as three gold. But fine. And then we initiate the battle. We need to put all the units according to their initiative. As you can see, 5, 3, 2, 1, 0. And uh, whom do we have here? We have archers, companion cavalry, infantry, phalanx, and Alexander. Uh, our enemies have sac sacred band, uh, they have infantry, Phalanx and um, the leader. So first of all, we draw the battle plans for the enemy. Normally, we would draw as many as four, but thanks to Parminion, we draw only one. You see how useful this advisor is. So the battle plan is, okay, pre-battle, uh, one random Alexander battle plan will be removed. So I'm choosing three battle plans uh, for the presence of Philip and one for the strength of Alexander. Mm, what would it be? I like uh, envelope. Envelope allows you to inflict uh, the hits, uh, which are the uh, force difference. So at least one hit will be done by this. Um, now flank is a good battle plan. It allows to add uh, one additional hit. This is for cavalry and infantry. Uh, rally, which allows you to uh, ignore one hit, is always good. And we can also have a regroup, which allows you to take back one of the units which, which was destroyed during the game. So let me roll. One, two, three, four, which will be removed. None, okay. Four, so the last one, the regroup. 
So this is how do we stand before the start of the campaign of this battle. Okay, time to proceed. Battle of Caronea. Uh, we start with the archers. They roll a die and we look at the strength. It is two. So on a roll die of one or two, we uh, will inflict uh, one hit. Nothing. Now I think I will use now envelope and thanks to this we'll inflict one hit. Uh, let me just it cannot be on the on the leader. I think the sacred band is pretty dangerous. I will inflict a hit on that. So now we have a mutual role, yeah, at the same time of both humans. No, actually guys, this was initiative three, now it's initiative two. So that was a good choice because now my heavy cavalry will fight in the initiative three and may inflict two hits, you see, four and superscript four. So if I roll four or less, I'm inflicting two hits and probably I will add this flank. Yes, I'm lucky, four using flank. So this is three hits in total. One will go for sure against this unit. One against phalanx, it goes to zero. One against infantry, it goes to one. So now we go to the initiative segment two, which is infantry. Sorry. Infantry misses, and we now here in initiative one segment. Let me roll first for the leader. Nothing. And for the enemy infantry hit, we will use the rally. Okay. Now we roll for the phalanx. Phalanx is a special ability. If it hits, we need to roll one four. Then it has another roll, but with efficiency of one less, so one three. If we hit again, we have another roll with efficiency of one less, so one two. So it can inflict up to four hits. So this is one hit. Now we roll again, one three. No luck. So there was a one hit, and we should inflict this hit here because we would be moving to the initiative zero. In initiative zero, we have only Alexander, which hits on one. Not very likely. Oh, close, but, but no. We move to the turn two of the battle. Uh, these are the battles uh, which last until all enemy units, except leaders, are, are, are uh, destroyed. We start with archers. No luck. A companion cavalry cannot attack. Uh, the cavalry can attack only every second turn. Far, uh, now infantry. No hit, it's a poor rolling. Now, uh, enemy leader, no hit. Enemy infantry, no hit. My phalanx, yes, this is a hit. And that's something which actually finishes the battle uh, because um, the leader will simply uh, escape here yeah, when, when faced with uh, uh, all of his units defeated. We get the two glory for the victory. All four units, including leader, are moved here to destroy enemy forces. If we manage to kill the leader, it can be done only by another leader, we would get another two glory. We return our battle plans. We did not have any casualties. The battle of Caronea was very successful for Alexander the Great. Okay, so Battle of Caronea was a success for Macedonian army. Now we need to make the, uh, to make the decision what we will do with this pivotal place, whether we will raise it or maybe we would like to govern. It. I think we need money to go from here at least to there. So we will raise the Caronea. We will immediately get 12 money, but we will not be getting those money every turn. So if we will playing if we will be playing more than three turns, yeah, we'll be worse off. If we will play maximum two more turns, we'll be better off. Now we'll move back to Macedon. We'll do the scout roll, of course. 
five. We have five is exactly what we needed from the money perspective. We can now take this prophecy or discard it without looking at this. I would like to try to fulfill it. So our prophecy is the strength of bulls. Build one new city. And we need to build this city within the next two turns. We have enough money for this, so I'm glad that, that we took both uh, and we'll be ready to spend them. I think we should move further here. Another scout roll. Six. So that means we are taking one hit. This is not such a bad thing for us. We can live with it. Now, it's a good question. What shall we do now? Whether we move forward uh, or maybe we should stop now. Uh, before this, we have another prophecy. I definitely would like to fulfill it, try to fulfill it. Uh, with silver spears, have 15 goals. 15 and within three turns. Uh, I think we should. We already have 19, so this automatically fulfilled. The prophecy is fulfilled. The Alexander is upgraded. Yeah. It reached new level. It's now on the initiative one and has two battle rating. Fantastic. Now, a big decision in front of us. We can push forward and try to uh, fight the battle of Granicus already now. Uh, or we can stop here and uh, spend the money and get the new money. Because uh, we don't have this good um, advisor, uh, Antipater, we will be able to only do one thing and buy either temple, city, or Macedonian force. One of those only uh, is possible here. I think that I would like uh, to have my forces strengthened and probably refitted a little before moving forward. So I will finish the conquest phase and I will go to the resupply phase. In the resupply phase, first of all, we are getting four gold for four conquered enemies. Uh, here is the gold. Uh, we can spend the glory and gold. Uh, we have not enough glory to spend it now. So there will be no glory to spend here. Uh, okay. So the decision is what we would like to buy. We can buy a city and that will allow us to fulfill this prophecy immediately. Or we can buy some units uh, and we'll need those units to fight uh, with uh, those walls. I'd rather invest in units. We'll still have time for the city. So what I will do, I will build, I will buy a heavy cavalry and I will build, buy, sorry, a siege engine. I pay one plus three, four for this. And of course now I have like seven units. So each of my moves could be hindered. Yeah. By such a large army, but I'm fine with this. Uh, okay, and that will conclude turn one. Now we move to the next turn, preparation. Uh, we advance the turn marker. Uh, then uh, I will be refitting one of my units, exactly here. And this costs me two. Now we will have enemy orders. Now we are much closer to those three places. So let's see what will happen. Uh, Sardis has plus two. One plus two, it's three, it's really bad. It's wall. Wall gives minus two to the die roll. So it's really hard uh, to conquer such a city. Now we go to Halicarnassus for. The Carnassus has seven, and this is one garnison. You see, if we manage to conquer Halicarnassus before we draw a go here, those uh, units will not go there. I'm not sure if we'll manage to do it. And now, Lysia. 
plus four two. Six, I think this is one garnish. Yes. It's getting hot. That was that was expected here. Yeah. Fine. Now our op uh, enemy operations still. So we draw one of those. Sorry. And this is one force, and we can stop it with a two gold. Do we want to do it? No. Let them let them have one more force. Hopefully some archer or other weak unit. Infantry is fine. Infantry is fine. Time to fight. We enter Granicus. We roll for the scout. Roll. Okay. Two, which means that we pay five a lot, but that was expected. Probably another another territory to be raised. Now, uh, let me put those units here in the battle display according to their initiative. This is two, yes. These are our enemies here. And one more here with the three. That way. A Macedonian army can be left here. So, now we draw the battle plans. And just a reminder minus three. Uh, for the enemy, so only two of them. One battle plan and second battle plan. So here archers get plus three first turn, so there will be very deadly. And here we have infantry gets plus two on the first turn, so they will be pretty deadly. So we know where to put the hits if we have a possibility. Now, from my perspective, uh, envelope maneuver would be good. I like it because we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven versus five. So it's, this will give us two hits. And then we can also. Uh, we, we, first of all, uh, we have our amount of battle plans is two, plus we can pay one gold for each other battle plan. But I think I will spend two gold uh, exactly to do this, so we will have four battle plans. Uh, I like this combo which does the sacrifice, plus, uh, let me see this, regroup, because you can die with a one unit, in a, uh, rolling one, and for example, a swift cavalry inflicting two damage. But if you add a flank to this, that will give us three hits. So yeah, I like this setup. Uh, where do we start? We start the battle from my envelope. I would like to play this. And I'm inflicting... Actually, first of all, we should roll with this six initiative. Uh, engine. If we roll one, we are lucky and we have one more hit. No. So now we play envelope. We will inflict two hits. Definitely one will go here. Let's see, Archer has only one uh, level. Uh, so this, this is out and I will also flip those guys. I would like also to get rid of them. Uh, now uh, we move to my archers. And he also falls one down. My archers, one, two, nope. Now, light cavalry, nothing. Now we have those two uh, setters. So first of all, heavy cavalry on the enemy side. Two hits. And now I'm using the sacrifice for those units. And I'm using also flank. So this will be like three hits, and those three hits, one will be here, and two more will be here. 
and now I'm rolling with my companions. I inflict two hits and destroy those guys. I still need to take two hits somewhere. I think I will take in those two units like this, just flipping them. And the enemy is fleeing. Yep. That's the end of the Battle of Granicus. This unit leaves because we have a regroup. And uh, let me just put it back. We have a regroup. We get two glory. All of those units go here. And yeah, you see, I didn't kill any of the units because I would like to have advantage in the number of the units before we start to besiege those cities. Okay, we are past the Granicus battle. Decision what we do with this place. This place will be governed. We would like to get some money, but also the intimidation rolls are such that uh, the more you raise, the less likely is that the um, city will uh, agree to, 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 to open the gates and simply uh, surrender. Because they know that in the past you were not merciless and yeah, it could have adverse uh, influence on their decisions. So we move here. We do another scout roll. Oops. Okay. Three, six, seven. Uh, so we pay six. That's a lot. But yeah. Let's face it. It was not cheap to wait or. Now, we can try the intimidation. How do we do the intimidation? We'll be rolling a die and we'll be adding some modifiers. If we roll six or less, uh, we have a failure and uh, we just uh, uh, have to fight. If we have seven to ten, we can wait another turn and uh, decide whether to roll once again or fight. If we have eleven plus, we can uh, the city falls in our hands. How do we calculate? those modifiers. First of all, we have a force difference. At this one time, we have seven units. They have three. So this is plus four for us. Quite nice. We can spend the glory. After the roll, we have four glory. So maximum plus eight. We have plus one for govern, minus one for race. That is why I didn't raise granite. So potentially you have plus eight. So we need three or more to intimidate uh, the, the, the city. Let us try and we'll get to gold. As a reminder, yes, we have three. It's a very expensive intimidation because I need to spend both glories, but we managed to convince them to surrender. We are getting those two glories. This is removed here, exactly here to the conquered enemies. Now, we definitely would like to govern this place. Yeah, we don't want to raise it. And now the good question is, what shall we do again? Come closer? Most probably, yes. We have six money, so it should be just enough for us to move. Three, so we spent four. And I think we'll stop here. If we'll be moving on a scout roll and do not have enough money, we would need to take hits. So this is end on the conquest uh, for the turn two. Okay, let us move to this resupply. First of all, we go gain the gold. The vanquished enemies. One, two, three, four, five, six, and eight. As many as eight gold. For this. Okay. We move them back here to the draw deck. Uh, now 
we get five per each area governed, so we get another 10, which is nice. I can just check here, three, four, four, four. Mm -hmm. So it's 20. We got 20. Uh, now, <coughs> sorry, uh, one more thing. We, of course, are getting two glory for intimidating the stronghold. Yeah, so we have two glory more. Uh, we would like now to go to the build phase and fulfill the prophecy. So we will build a city uh, here. We are here. We are building city here. So we are fulfilling the second prophecy. And Alexander is being promoted to a free. Exactly, still. Uh, still, it looks uh, really, really good. You see, because of I love those two units um, hit, we were able to, to intimidate the Sardis, and now uh, we were able to, to in the resupply phase, use the money for building the city and at the beginning of a turn three we'll be able to use the money for refitting the units. And this is what we should do. So we go to the uh, preparation phase, we advance turn marker. This is the first turn in which you can get the victory points and the game can, can end. And that makes sense in our case too. Uh, okay, uh, refit. Yeah, we refit two units, definitely. That's what we want to do. We spend four on this. And now we go through the enemy orders. First, first of all, Halicarnassus. Plus one, two. That's a wall. It doesn't look good, I can tell you. Mm. And now uh, Lysia plus two. This is four. I lose two gold or hit, suffer one hit. I rather lose two gold. So we should have eight here. And now I think there is no choice. We'll need to fight. This will be very difficult fight. Here. Uh, of course, I forgot operations. We need to draw an operation, and this is one wall. And I can stop it with four gold. No, thank you. What I'm planning to do is actually destroy Halicarnassus before this could be triggered. We move against the city, and we roll a die for a scout roll. Two. <clears throat> and there is like seven of our units, so we pay five. Yes, we pay the early. Uh, it's probably no wonder for you that if we manage to conquer Halicarnassus, it will be raised. Because we would need the money immediately. So, can we try the intimidation? I would say small chances. We have seven units, they have five, so with advantage of two. Uh, we have to govern one race, so it's plus one, so advantage of three. And we have also two glory, so it's advantage of five. So we need to roll six in order to be able to intimidate them. Uh, not much chances. Now, when the battle comes into the play, uh, our chances are also uh, pretty pretty difficult. The situation is follow. The walls uh, gives minus two to our attack. So all our units has zero attack except for the walls, which will be potentially hitting them and then inflicting some damage. What we can do is pray that the uh, Zich engines will destroy some of the wall at the, in the first turn and then try to do some sacrifice with the group with uh, the companions. They have four attacks, so if we destroy one wall, it will be minus three, so they can still hit. That's good. Uh, 
we really don't have much choice. We need battle. We'll not be rolling uh, for for uh, for the intimidation. If we roll one, then uh, we will have five, and we will have mass battle. Yeah. Actually, on the second foot, let's reset it. Close. We would have like 10, so we may battle or we can stay on. I, I think we will battle. Okay, okay, so we move this infantry here. Uh, archers, first of all, archers. One more archer. And this is uh, heavy cavalry. The walls are here. Unfortunately, our uh, envelope will not work in a situation where we have uh, where we have the walls. So they draw two battle plans, minus three for Parmenion. Again, it is really worth investment. Parmenion, so one, two. Sorry, not forces, but battle plans. So we draw two battle plans. There was five, minus three. What do we have here? Infantry gets plus plus two on the first turn. There is no infantry. Sorry, bad luck. And infantry gets plus two on the first turn. So it was pretty unlucky draw for the Persians. But let's see what we can do. I would like to get the sacrifice with uh, regroup. And we have still one more possibility of here. And with the flag. It gives us one unit will be destroyed, but will inflict three hits, hopefully against the walls. Uh, I will pay two more. Uh, for two more battle plans, I will take rally. Uh, that's for sure. And uh, when we destroy the walls, uh, there is a possibility to do the envelope, and it might be a good idea. Sorry for the destroying the prophecy. So let's see how it goes. Now a big roll <coughs> for for the walls uh, and for the siege engines against the walls. If we do not hit with the siege engines. Forget uh, any hits in this turn. One, two, three. Yes, we have a hit. Now we need to survive the attack of enemies. We will not be rolling with our archer. There is really no no way. We roll on minus two. Those archers hit on one, two. First archer, nothing. Second archer. Nothing. Now here, we have a heavy cavalry, let them hit first. And they inflict two hits. Uh, let's remember about it. We'll again flip two units. And now, uh, we roll first. Uh, this cavalry will not inflict any hits. It has minus three to roll, so zero attack strength. But this unit, on the uh, roll of one will inflict two hits. So what we'll do, we'll actually use the sacrifice. We'll kill that unit, but we have automatically one on his die roll. We have minus three here, four minus three is one. So we hit and we use the flank. And the flank has one additional hit and we destroy those walls. Now we move further and now we can play the envelope. Envelope gives us advantage because for 6 to 3 we do the free hits. Uh, I will destroy those guys and we'll, this was 2 hits, this is 1 hit. And this is the situation we have now before rolling with this group. So first of all infantry hit, so they are also destroyed. Halicarnassus is conquered. 
and now we use regroup. We actually could uh, rally and, and not have a hit on one unit so here. So this unit regroups. Walls are destroyed. Uh, we should have also walls as destroyed. Yeah? So all of them should go here. And unfortunately, Holy Carnassus will be burned to the ground. Race. And we get 12. These are our units before moving further. We get another to glory. I'm not spending glory uh, on any insights or advisors. I'd rather spend them on intimidation. This is at least how I play. I think we should move on. Uh, we have still seven units and let us roll. Three, so we pay four. Fine, we are fine with this. Shall we try the intimidation? We have seven units, we have three services plus four. We have four glory services plus another four. We definitely should try the intimidation. We have two govern, two raise, so that uh, nullifies one another. Three or more. Three. Three, four for glory, this is seven. And uh, four, uh, from the advantage, this is 11. So those units are destroyed. And we should have govern here, I think. I will tell you later why. There are additional points for this. At least I have the points as, uh, for, for the immortality. That way, we concluded the first scenario, Granicus. We conquered or intimidated all of the focal areas. Now, how to calculate the victory points? Before we calculate the victory points, we can still spend some gold and boost up our victory. We have four, eight destroyed units. That's a lot. So we have eight for this. On top of this, we have free govern. So this is 15 additional gold. So let me just see how I can do it. I can get 20 and minus 5. Okay. Uh, let me just put it here. This is 4, 4. Okay, that way. And now I need 2 ones. So 20 minus 5. And that's what I have left. Nice sum. Nice lump sum. Uh, we will not spend on anything else than buying the city, which will give us victory points at the end of the game. So this is five gold. Now we can calculate the points. Let me just put it here. We have 25 points for the turn where we finish the game. We have five points here and five points here. This is in a total of 35 points. We can also calculate the immortality points. So how good the scenario went as far as long-term, let's say, repercussions are concerned. So how we would be remembered and for what we will be remembered. In order to calculate the immortality points, yeah, it's here how we do it. This is how we calculate and then across four scenarios you add them up and see where you land for how long you will be remembered. So each area governed, we have one, two, three, gives us six immortality points, so this is 18. Each unspent glory, we don't have any, would give us four immortality points and each VP earned would give us two immortality points. We have 35 times two, that is 70. 
70 plus 18 uh, versus uh, 80, uh, 88, 88 points. This is not bad because uh, after one scenario, we are already remembered for 100 years. Uh, so this was pretty, pretty uh, successful. Okay, that concludes my how to play the field commander Alexander. I hope you like it. I hope that uh, you get so hooked as I did. I will be presenting a further campaigns and scenarios like ISOs pretty soon. Thank you for today and have a great day. Bye. Don't forget to subscribe, uh, to like the video. Please also uh, give your thumbs up. Thanks.